Let's take another few minutes to review the 68-95% rule as it applies to the normal curve. So re-examining the previous set of data, and I've drawn a nice symmetrical normal curve here, let's remember first that the mean of this set of data is 20. Also, we also we need to know that the standard deviation is 3.3. So when we apply this to the normal curve, uh, we are going to draw several lines. We're going to draw some that represent standard deviations from the mean. The key point is to look at where the curve starts to turn to concave up. This is concave down. It's getting steeper, steeper, steeper. And at the point where the line starts getting shallower, about right in here is where we draw our vertical line. We're going to draw one on the other side as well at that point. That point is called the point of inflection. Okay, point of inflection. And that's where it goes from concave up to concave down. Now, what we want to do is we want to send this standard deviation out one more set to the left. This is one standard deviation over, and I want to go out two standard deviations. Okay, So this length out here is one standard deviation to this way. We're going to do the same thing the other way. Let's set this curve out over here. Okay, oops. and we've identified one and two standard deviations. Now, we're going to apply the fact that it's 3.3 units is our standard deviation off the mean. So we're going to label this point as 20. That makes this one 23.3. This one we're going to subtract 3.3 so we get 16.7. Careful with your subtraction. And if I go a standard deviation further in each direction, I'm going to get 13.4 on the short end and 26.6 .6 on this end. Okay. Now, let's apply let's apply the 68-95 rule. First, we need to realize that from between here in here, between those two points, we get 68% of all data. Okay, 68% of all data falls under the area of this region right here. Okay, so if we expand to two standard deviations, all the data that would be shaded in this region between the outer and the inner gives us even more. It gives us 90. 95% 95 of all data sit between two standard deviations. Now, uh, we're going to use these two numbers to dissect this even further. Okay? If this is 68%, then the distance from the mean just halfway out okay, is exactly half of that, or 34% because that is 68 divided by 2. Okay. Likewise, if I go from the mean here and I kick it out, not one, but two standard deviations from the mean, okay, I get half of the 95, because 95 is from, one, uh, from two standard deviations out one way to two standard deviations out the other. But if I'm just going from the mean one way or the other, it's half a 95, or 47.5%. Okay? Good. So, the next thing we have to look at is if I take from the mean here, if I take from the mean and move out all the way this way, if I just kept going from that mean all the way over, that would take that bell-shaped curve and cut it exactly in half. So that would be 
you can see that that's really close to this 47, except we're, we're missing this little region right here. Let's do that one next. This little region from one standard, from two standard deviations on, out this way, okay, is going to be two and a half percent. Let me tell you two reasons why we can come up to that conclusion. The first way to explain that is this is 95% of the data between the, the marks that indicate two standard deviations. If the bell-shaped curve represents 100% of all data, and this represents 95, then the remaining regions on either side must be that remaining 5%. Since we have some on one side and an equal amount on the other, then each side is half of that 5%. So half of 5% is 2.5. So that's one way to explain that. Another way to explain that is take a look at this 47.5. We know that this is 47.5 from here, from the mean, out to standard deviations. And we also know down here that if we start at the mean and go either way and go all the way up, one whole half of the bell curve represents 50%. So the only remaining region between 50% and 47.5 is this little bit out here, or 50 minus 47.5 gives 2.5%. So that's two ways to look at those sets of data. Okay. We're going to take this page and make it a little uh, neater so we can look at a couple of others. Okay. We'll take and erase some of this information as to not be cluttered. And we're going to look at some other combinations of the 68-95 rule. Okay? So here we go. Let's get rid of this and this. Okay? And let's start fresh. So now we need to look at any iteration. So one way we can think about it is, what would happen if we were looking at all numbers, if this was a set of test scores, from, that were greater than 16.8. That means that it's from here all the way out this way. Okay, what would that imply? How much? How, what percentage of the data would this represent? So here's how we look at this one. First, we know that from from the mean out is 50 percent. That's one that we always have to remember. Okay. And we know that what's left is this little piece, and we've already shown that since this is 68, that we know this is 34. So if this is 50 up here and 34 here, that makes the total here 84%. Okay? 84% of all numbers in this belt normal curve occur above 16.7. From here up is 34 plus 50. 34 plus 50. Okay. Let's take a look at the fact that we have 84 here, and then we conclude that if you went this way, we get the same thing that we did earlier. Okay. If this is 84 and the normal curve is 100%, then this is 100 minus 84, or 16%. So again, 16% plus 84% give us 100%. Okay, let's take a look at a few others using the 6895 rule. We might ask you a question like, how many pieces of data, uh, sets of data or numbers would fall between 16.7 and 26.6? So we're not extending, we're actually stopping it right there. Here's how we're going to piece that one together in a similar addition. We want to start looking at our halves. So half of 68 gives us 34 again. And we already know that from here out to here was half of 95, or 47.5. Okay. So if we're just including these two sets, the 34 and the 47.5, then our total answer here is 34 plus 47 are, we're going to have 1.5 and 81.5, okay? Another way to look at that is we just showed that it was 84 all the way out. We could subtract this 2.5% again here. 2.5% away from 84 gives us 81.5%. 
So we could use these techniques of adding the, the parts, either the 34, the 47 and a half, the 50%, the two and a half, into various pieces to answer any question related to the 6895.